All set on attendance. Okay, we have a couple of adjustments to the agenda. Um, there's a 4.1 and 4.2 uh, talking about the solar eclipse and potential action. I'd entertain a motion to accept the March 14th, 2024 school board meeting minutes. Robin, do we have a second? Phoebe, any errors or omissions? Seeing none, roll call please. Yes. 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 And New York City trip. Kim? Do I, I hold it. Is that the key? No. Got it. I am here today to ask for kind of permission for three trips that are happening soon, very soon, and not so soon. Um, the first is our annual New York City trip. We call it the Humanities Trip. We have done this trip every year for, I think, 30 years starting at Livermore Falls. Um, the only time we have not done it is during COVID. So um, we brought back the trip um, last year. This year uh, we're doing the trip to see the musical Wicked, which is absolutely um, a favorite of lots of people. And a lot of kids are very excited about that show. We go for 24 hours. We leave here at 6 a.m. We return at 6 a.m. We spend 14 of those 24 hours on the bus. And the rest of the time we spend in New York City in small groups where kids can kind of explore the city and do what they choose. And then we all meet together to see the show in the evening. Um, on that second day, we do not expect the kids to be in school. They do, however, have to attend a, some mandatory time where we learn a little bit about New York City. We learn about the show that we're going to see, um, in which case Wicked has a lot that we can discuss and look at from Frank Baum all the way up to the current novel and play and soon to be movie. Um, so there's a lot for us to look at. So that is our first trip and I think then do I stop and you do something or do I continue <laughs> and you well, do them all at once? Well, I, th I think what we'll do is we're going to entertain a motion. That way the board can ask you questions and you can respond. Then we'll go to the next one. Perfect. That would sounds great. Would anyone like to make a motion? Phoebe. I would like to move that we approve the NYC trip for the spring of 2024. And that's seconded by Chantel. Any questions by board members? Tina? How many kids we got going? So I do know that answer. So there's a total of 55 that can fit on a bus. We bring about six or seven chaperones, I think generally seven chaperones, and around 47 or so students, depending on what we have. So it is open to juniors and seniors um, first, and then if we do not fill the bus, we open it up to sophomores to attend. Um, I, and I forgot to mention, I do think it's important to know that the cost of the trip is about $230 per student. That includes the ticket to the show and Wicked is not a cheap show. It's one of the reasons we haven't done Wicked in a while. Um, but I was able to get great seats at a fairly decent price. Um, and this year we got a much better deal on our bus than we've had in the past two years, um, which enabled us to see a little bit like fancier 
of a show. Last year we did a much less expensive show because the bus was outrageous. <laughs> um, I think it's about $3,000 less this year. Um, students can raise money by selling poinsettias at um, Christmas time, and then um, they're generally given um, a period of time to have a deposit to secure their spot and then pay the balance. Uh, and then they are responsible for paying for their meals while they're there. So um, it's not, it's open to everyone, but there is a financial obligation. However, a student that really wants to go can raise the money um, and we've had lots of students do that in the past, so. Joel? So, and you may have said this and I might have missed it. So when you say spring of 2024, we're basically in spring of 2024 now. Correct. Do you have a date and, and when you talk about numbers, is that number set yet, or are they still applying to go? So, the excellent question, Joel. <laughs> um, the date of the trip is May 28th and 29th. We have always kind of gone on a Tuesday and Wednesday when it's cheaper and less busy in New York City for traffic. Um, <laughs> And that's kind of right before all the senior stuff starts to happen. Um, we have just opened up the trip like last week. So students are currently signing up for the trip. Um, one of the reasons, so, and normally we generally ask for permission way before now. Um, but I think this year for some reason it was like this crazy whirlwind where we could, we did not know what show we wanted to see. It's a weird kind of year on Broadway. There's a lot of like iffy things that we were like, would kids want to see that? Would we want to see that? Um, so when we finally made our decision, everything from that point went super quickly. Like, okay, yes, you can have the tickets. You need to pay for them tomorrow. Like, it was that sort of fast. Um, so we had to kind of spring into action and secure those things um, with the understanding that it was definitely going to be happening. So please, please approve this trip. Um, <laughs> but um, right now we have 27 students already signed up with deposits. Um, we are hoping that we'll have some more tomorrow and then we will start to say if we don't have more people, we will open it up to sophomores from that point. Generally, we have not had to go beyond sophomores. They're usually happy to step up. Hopefully, that answered all of your questions. Any more board questions? Seeing none, roll call, please. Yes. Tyler? Yes. Ross? Yes. So moved. Now you're. Now this one is the, <laughs> the um, soonest that I mentioned, and I'm going to um, owe this to like COVID brain. I have been talking to Scott about this trip for more than two years, <laughs> but somehow forgot to talk to you for more than two years. Um, we have a Europe trip that leaves in 11 days. Um, it is going <laughs> to England, Ireland, and Scotland. And I totally thought that I had already gotten board approval two years ago. Like, in my head, that had happened until I went to asked to be put on the agenda for the New York trip and realized, wait, have you gotten approval for the Europe trip? And we determined that that did not happen. So I am now asking for approval for the Europe trip. I would love to tell you about that. Um, we have 47 people who will be traveling to Dublin, Edinburgh, and London on April 
from April 12th to April 22nd. It is an 11 day trip with basically three days in each country. Um, we started with this trip um, two years ago, so in uh, May of 2022. So um, students, and actually, uh, we had not done a Europe trip in a few years because of COVID. And I was not exactly sure how a Europe trip would go. I filled a bus the within two days of announcing the trip. So the trip was full in two days, um, which means that 47, well, not my chaperones, but 42 people or so paid their deposit and signed up like that next day. Um, so it was very well received and um, the community definitely supports um, those trips and um, sending students to them. We have out of that 47, 27 are students and 20 are adults, six are chaperones and 14 are parents or um, other family members, grandparents, etc., of students. And we have um, adults go on these trips because it's a great safe way to travel with their kids that they don't have to worry about all of those other things that you have to worry about if you're traveling to a foreign country. And if you've never traveled outside of the United States, it can be really scary. So one of the things that we do these trips for is to show people that actually traveling out of the United States is really not scary. It's wonderful and um, it gives them confidence to travel more um, in their adult lives and, and travel with their families more too. Um, this trip, um, I, I'm not exactly sure because the price changes over two years, so I know what the price now would be to join, but I think the price was around $3,600 per student. Because we had two years to prepare, um, students had two years to fundraise, and they also had two years to like work and make money. So those kids who were working babysitting or at McDonald's had a full two years to be able to pay. And we had a record-breaking mum sale where like this entire cafeteria what, from stage all the way to the back was filled with mums. We sold thousands of mums. I don't even know how that's possible, um, but the kids did it. And we raised like almost $7,000, I think, just from that one fundraiser. All of that money goes to supplement students' trips. It will never pay for a student's trip. If we were going to do fundraising to pay for trips, we would never be able to go. So like that $6,000 is a lot, but that would only pay for one and a half kids to go on a trip. Um, so what it does pay for is our transportation to and from the airport. It pays for all of their tips and stuff while they're over there. And then whatever else they make during that time goes right back to them to be able to spend on their food or whatever when they get there so that they don't have to worry about having that extra money at the end of that two years. Um, so that is pretty much where that is now. I, you, I probably did not say anything, everything. So if you have questions. We have a motion. Nope. I move that we approve the Europe trip for April of 2024. Do you want to include the spring of 26 or no? <laughs> spring of 26. Oh, yes. Thank you. Duh. Let's do both. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, we're going to be going to Spain in spring of 2026. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Chantel, any questions? Joel's thinking. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, just, I mean, it's the first time we've talked about an international trip, I guess, in a while. So, um, I mean, I'm impressed. A, you got that group and everything else like that, so very good there. And I assume you're going through all the things as far as making sure they have all the right 
passports and everything else like that and everyone's got, because that's a crazy part of this world nowadays too, absolutely so. so i travel exclusively through um the company ef tours and there's a reason why i do that because i know that their safety and their like worldwide network is crazy amazing um ef tours takes control of a lot of that stuff and gives me a very detailed list of everything that I need. So, so they're basically managing the trip for you. Correct. Okay, that's so I do have, I personally have copies of everyone's passports, medical information, if there is an emergency so that I can get it to whoever I need to at that moment. Um, but students will also, like, we. you have two school board members who are going on this trip. <laughs> um, and they will be wearing these, they wear bracelets that have a number on them that connects them immediately to somebody. If they call EF, they get right in charge with our tour guide who gets right in charge with me, in, in contact with me. It is like a very well-oiled machine. Um, and th these girls will realize it. But once you've done a few of these trips, you... The, the organization and how it works, um, you kind of get a system down that works really well. And um, I break my kids into groups by chaperone. Each chaperone is in charge of just kind of knowing where kids are and um, making sure they get on a subway or on a bus or have their passports so that I don't have to worry about all 47. I am worried about my little group of six, and each of my chaperones is worried about their little group, and then we can quickly and easily move through. Y getting 47 people in and out of places on a subway in the airport is a an absolute crazy thing. Um, so being able to do that efficiently is a really cool thing. So um, it's going to be a great trip. And obviously, we, we're we taking up a whole bus. So we're kind of, there's no other schools traveling with us. We have the whole tour guide to ourselves and can pretty much do what we want, which is nice. Any other questions? Seeing none, roll call, please. <coughs> yes. Avery? Yes. 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 That these two have mentioned our good news during your comments. I figured you would, but I just want to make sure. Okay, public comments. Uh, Roger. Okay, I come here tonight more furious than I've ever been when I come to these meetings. I got a phone call Monday night from a board member who let me know I made a mistake. That wasn't the words they used, but they told me I made a mistake that one of your board members was going to present a motion to move the book up to the middle school minus one copy that was going to be left behind the library teacher's desk for fifth graders only. I was told that my speech changed their mind. There's two very large problems with that. For one, my speech should never, ever, ever allow you to negatively affect my children. It should only allow you to positively accept, uh, uh, affect my children. If it will allow you to negatively affect my children, I'm asking you right now to please resign. Secondly, it proves that there was a quorum before the vote. I was told that Robin Beck was going to make that introduction and that Elaine Fitzgerald was going to second it. Well, Bob Staples is the one who called me and told me that. So if you, apparently Elaine's calling Bob a liar. I'm going to ask the three of you to resign effective immediately. And if you don't, I am going above you. You can laugh, Elaine. Bob's not going to lie to me about that. Roger, first of all, Three is not a quorum. We didn't meet, and seven's a quorum, so get your facts straight. Okay. Well, still, those discussions should not happen before a meeting. That is against your policy, ethics, and main state law. You are not supposed to devise motions before you're sitting here at the meeting, and you know that, sir. 
I am asking you to resign. You're, and you're smiling about that. You, yeah, think that's, you think that's a good thing, that you guys decided to leave this for eight-year-olds because I made you angry. That's acceptable to you? And secondly, okay, last time, Tina, you read our school policy on the library when I had just said that it wouldn't filter out Hustler. And you said if you can't find something in that policy that would allow you to remove the book, you would not. So I'm asking you now, if you found Hustler in the high school library, would you remove it? Or would you say no because the policy doesn't have a spot in there that, that directly says it needs to be removed? This is comment, this isn't discussion. I'm asking her to answer me, and I think it's a this, valid question. This is, this is your comment time, time for you to comment. It's not time for discussion back and forth with the board. Okay, so I guess I'll just continue to repeat that I'm asking the three of you to resign because you very clearly had your mind made up before the meeting. You can shake your head, but Bob Staples ain't going to call and lie to me, Elaine. You all need to go. If you don't have the children's best interests in mind, get away. If something I do convinces you to change what doing what is right for children, you're a pathetic human being and you need to go away. Superintendent's report. Good evening. Uh, met with the association. We discussed next year's calendar possibilities. We discussed the new Family Medical Leave Act law, and we also discussed the eclipse. Uh, met with our high school council counselors, along with Kathy Doyon and Leanna Lavoy from Maine Health Organization, uh, to be put together an application for a five-year grant for drug-free communities. I attended our district safety meeting to discuss safety concerns in each building, as well as protocols that need to be reviewed. Also, during the past two weeks, I met with Representative Sheila Lyman to discuss bills before our state legislature connected to education. Starting next week, anonymous surveys will go out to students, staffs, and parents with questions about bullying. Questions or comments for Scott? When, when we send it out, we'll make sure you guys get it as well because it'll go out uh, by robo email. Okay. Yep. Anyone else? Okay, administrative reports. Pat. Hmm? Whoop. Did, uh, oh, hey, my bad. Sorry, ladies. Okay, good evening. Since the last time we spoke, a few things have happened. Um, as you know, the One Act team came in first for regionals, and they came in third for the state competition in Millinocket uh, for Class B. Um, also, congrats to Gabby Smith and Derek Jake for winning individual all-cast awards. And then spring sports also started this Monday, so everyone's really excited for that. And the third quarter ends this Friday, so with grades closing, we know the students are working very hard with their academics. And that's all. And I obviously skipped over completely <laughs> board member comments, so I apologize for that. Uh, any board members that has? Chantel? Congratulations on the One Axe win. That is amazing. I still think about, like, and on the humanity strip, I think I was the last class to see Wicked in Limmore Falls. It was amazing. So just keep it up. You guys are doing awesome. Phoebe? Hi, uh, this past Tuesday, I was fortunate enough to uh, be able to go to uh, the State House to uh, meet with the Senate as the intention was to also 
uh, be with the House of Representatives. We did briefly meet with the governor as well, uh, where we were to discuss um, schools as well as funding and other information. Unfortunately, the House of Representatives did have a medical emergency, so they did not have a quorum. So we weren't able to meet with them, but we did get to have a tour of everything and we did get to see some um, students be able to be honorary pages for the day and be able to look at the different system that um, our government has in place. So it was very interesting going from um, the school to the state house and seeing how they intertwine together. Um, we were able to give letters to different representatives that weren't there. They did have um, people who were there to do that, to be able to get the word out to help support our public schools. So we were very pleased with that. Thank you. Anyone else? Andrew? No, I was pleased to see in the Lewis and paper this past week that Speller Huck Doobie made the 12th of 14 rounds in the state spelling bee, mm -hmm. which I think is an outstanding accomplishment. I don't want to step on Mr. Target's toes if he was going to be bringing that up, but I think it's um, nice that we have a, a positive uh, message like this in the paper seen out and that we have some outstanding students and we are doing the right things. Anyone else? Skip anything else? <laughs> <laughs> Administrative reports, Pat. I can use some stuff. Good evening. Um, so last week, I have to thank uh, Chris, which hurts my soul a little bit, but he invited us up, <coughs> the elementary up to see the play. Uh, Got to give. Mr. Labonte and all of the kids, a huge round of applause. They were so amazing. And uh, I know the third, fourth, and fifth graders loved it. It's the, probably the longest I've seen them quiet in a while. Um, so, and they did such a great job. And it was great to see my former students and realize how much shorter I've gotten as I shrink in my old age, I guess. And they've become giants. Um, on that front, um, auditions for the elementary school play will be April 23rd. Um, rehearsals will be on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And we're looking at May 29th to have the, the play available to the parents and community. Um, fourth grade, fourth grade's been tromping through the woods, teaching the kids about sap and collecting sap and boiling sap and bringing me some nice, um, after they boiled it down and they gotta have some pancakes and pour it on whatever they wanted, but they thought they should share it with me, and it was so good. Like, it was outstanding. I'm like, you guys might have a future in this. Um, to go along with our greenhouse, uh, the Rev Grant, um, we're in the process. I just ordered 45 pairs of snowshoes for next year. Um, we'll be ordering another 45 pairs um, so that we can get the kids out into the woods in the winter. Um, we did the winter kids a few years ago, and I was, I was a little... Su surprised at how many kids had never been on snowshoes and how much fun they had when we took them down to French Falls and let them run around in the snowshoes so we'll have enough for classes to be able to take their kids out into the woods um, and at 90 pairs I mean that's almost a grade level so um, pretty excited about that uh, our readathon is coming to a close and last year I dressed up as a leprechaun and this year, the kids, I was talking to kids and whatever, and I, I don't know why, but they wanted to shave my head. And I said, I don't really have the body for a shaved head. So I, I said, well, I better ask my wife. And I went, and I literally didn't get out of my wife and my, out of my mouth, and my wife was like, no. You are not shaving your head. I do not want to be married to Uncle Fester. And I was like, geez, dear. So... But you got a different body type. So, well, I'm just. <laughs> so some of the kids had thought about, like, dyeing my beard. They're like, you got a lot of grade. We could dye your beard and your hair. And I'm like, I think my wife will be good with that. So they will be dyeing my hair because last year the kids raised $8,390. This year they had to beat it. So far um, they've raised $8,900. 
So I will be getting, I'm not sure what color yet, because I have to talk to the individual. They don't know that they're choosing, but they'll find out tomorrow. They get to choose what color, and they will be dyeing my hair and beard. So, read it on. a board visit. <laughs> Maybe. I'll, I'll send it out when I know when it's going to happen. And then, um, as far as school numbers, last time I was in front of you, we had 289 students, and now we have 286. Questions? Yes. Tasha. We use it for anything I do for kids, that's where the money goes. Like we bought two gaga ball pits. We have one outside for the kids. We have one inside for gym because the kids love it. It's like dodgeball, but like like waist down. So you don't have to worry about kids getting drilled in the head or like that. Um, end of the year, when we do our field day, it pays for all of that. Um, anytime during the year, I provide pizza or whatever, candy, snacks, whatever. It all comes from that. It all goes. Um, I try to give as much back as I can for the kids. And like if we do a trip and I need to supplement it, that's where it comes from. Uh, we put all new backboards on the playground. I did that, all the balls and that kind of equipment that the kids want. Because kids will come and say, oh, I'd really like to have, they wanted a tether ball. I'm like, all right. So I bought tether balls and had them put up. So kids asked me, we have corn ball, or not corn ball, um, corn hole. So I bought some corn holes for the kids. So whatever the kids ask, and if I can find it and where I don't feel, feel like I'm spending, like, too much money because I'm kind of cheap, um, I get it for the kids. So that's what I use the money for. Pee -wee. Uh oh. Uh, <laughs> I love how um, involved you get with us, like the leprechaun suit. That was perfect. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to see the beard. Now, um, if you need ideas in the future, I do have a snowman costume, a chicken <laughs> costume. Like, you know, you know, I, I do, I do have a chicken costume. Um, I don't know and about you the know chicken. me, you, you've seen Dante go through your school, and Absolutely. Spirit Day is always like our big thing. Yeah. But um, if you need help with costume suggestions, I do have costumes that will fit you. You're not the first person that has missioned Santa Claus to me, and I'm not sure why. Oh, it's a Frosty the Snowman costume. Oh, okay. I've, I've worn it multiple times. It's a lot of blast, especially if you hold really still when the bus comes and then you turn around. The kids love it. I might have to take that one next year. Anyone Christmas. else? Thank you. All right, thank you. Cherry. Hello. Sorry, I have to move this. I feel like it's going to poke me in the eye. Uh, so in special education, we currently have 355 students. This is including 23 in referral. Uh, this is a decrease of eight students overall in special education since last month. Um, the referrals are up by seven and will likely continue to increase. This is the busy time of year in special education um, as we are reviewing the fall referrals and determining eligibility, we're getting all the new referrals from the data collected by the teachers throughout the school year. Uh, we currently have 71 students at the primary school with IEPs, that's down one. The elementary school has 83, which is the same as last month. Middle school has 95, and the high school has 106, which the middle school is down two and the high school is down five. Uh, we continue to have 14 students in out-of-district special purpose schools for day treatment programming. That's the same number as last month, and we're continuing to work with the, um, one of the schools to bring a student back. We have our next meeting tomorrow, actually. Um, as you all know, we're in the process of a special education audit by the Office of Special, education Ser special Services and Inclusive Education through the Maine Department of Ed. In February, our preliminary findings were eight corrections in five areas. So those corrections were done by the case managers, our, some of our special ed teachers, and submitted on Monday, and those were improved, approved and closed this week. So the next step is in, by the end of April, I'll receive a corrective action plan from the state for those things that we were less than 80% compliant on, and we will have until February of 2025 uh, to meet those correction items. Also in April, we'll, be score, we'll receive a score of one through four, with one being the best. 
Um, one is, they, the team shared with us, that one is hard to get, but we're definitely not a four. So I don't know what that means. But with each of those, there is training that we have to participate in, as well as it determines the number of years before we're reviewed again. So if we get a one, it's six years before our next audit. If we get a two or a three, it's four years before the next audit. Um, a four would be we'd re-audit in two years, but we won't be there. Uh, during the two workshop days in March, we had an additional 20 staff members participate in initial safety care training, which is the um, de-escalation program that makes us Chapter 33 restraint and seclusion compliant. We have a total of 57 staff members district-wide trained in the de-escalation modules, and 12 staff members are also trained in the physical restraint mo modules. Physical restraint is only used when there's imminent risk of serious physical harm or injury to a student or others. So that's why the, we have significantly fewer people trained with restraint. But there are some in each building. Uh, also during the wor March workshop days, Jenna and I did an overview training for all the staff on the similarities and differences between Section 504 and special education, as well as the process for both programs that, pro um, the referral process for both programs that provide services to students with disabilities. This seemed to be very well received by the district staff. We did share our slideshow through Google Drive with all of the staff members in the district. So if there are any board members that are interested in knowing more about these two things, we would gladly share that with you as well. So just let us know. Okay. Questions, comments? Tina? Yeah, can you give me some idea of what kinds of things were being flagged in that audit? Sure. Um, the way our, our goals are worded was flagged in the audit. So um, if, we didn't, if we didn't focus on a specific skill and we wanted the outcome, so if we wanted them to complete their homework, that's an outcome based, well what skill are we going to teach to get them to complete their homework? That's one of the things that was um, flagged. Also, um, there has to be, if there is a service that we're providing, so if we're providing reading instruction, there has to be a goal. And we also, have, in one section of the IEP, have to identify the reading skill as a weakness. So there's multiple areas of an IEP that have to match. Um, and also, let's see, the other one was, um, Goals have to change from year to year with rigor, even if they don't, if their goal was to meet something at 80% and they only met it at 50%, we still have to change the rigor of that goal um, up to their new baseline and how we're going to teach them different so that they finished meeting the rest of the way. Um, so progress from year to year. How big of a time and effort investment do you see it taking for for the school district to be fully in compliance with with the expectations of the state? This year, um, we made a lot of changes that we implemented in October based on the most recent training. Um, so this year, there was definitely a significant amount of time put in because our teachers had to um, learn a new way, right? They couldn't just go with the same old process that they've been writing IEPs with. Um, so there was definitely some more significant time put in this year. Um, probably to prepare, to prepare and complete paperwork for one IEP meeting is about an hour and a half of work for um, each meeting. And you don't see that substantially changing because of this? I don't, nope. Thank you. Robin? Sherry, how, sta how staffing, your staffing, we're down two teachers at the high school, two special education teachers. Um, we have two ed tech positions open, ed tech twos open at the middle school, and currently have an ed tech one position open at the primary school. So we have fantastic long-term subs at the high school, so we have been fortunate with that. Anyone else? Thank you. Michael. Good evening. Um, <coughs> I'll open up with enrollment numbers. Uh, the last time we met, we were at 361. We lost a student, uh, so we're at 360. I'm hoping to find him eventually. Um, we seem to be hovering around those numbers, right at 360. 
Yeah, yeah, don't, <laughs> yeah, don't put that in the paper, please. Um, we're, we seem to be staying right at that 360, 361 um, all year, just going back and forth. Um, give you an update on our reading is sweet challenge. Um, the student's goal was to read 5,000 books in the month of May. I mean, the month of March. We're in, we're in March still. Um, and if they met that goal, they were going to turn me into a human Sunday. We're three weeks in, so we have this week here we haven't totaled yet. Um, but so far, they've read 5,500 books. So they've already hit their goal. Um, so sometime in April, and I'll get the details out to everyone, um, they'll be turning me into a human Sunday. So that should be fun. Um, I also want to give uh, a shout out to Sherry Parker and Jenna Cody um, for their um, training that she mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, it was, I think, by far one of the better the better trainings we've had as a whole staff. Um, just to kind of sit down um, and everyone hears the same language, um, understands the process a little better. Um, so hoping we see some continued um, trainings like that going forward. Um, kindergarten administration is next week, so Thursday and Friday, um, the 4th and the 5th. So there'll be no school for the, our kindergarten students that day. Um, so the teachers can uh, screen all the new students coming in. And that includes our transitional kindergarten as well. Um, and uh, Mr. Sinclair mentioned it. Um, just want to give also a shout out to uh, Mr. Labonte and his drama club. I'm not sure what he calls the class he runs. It was one of the best shows I've seen put on. Um, and we take our students to the movies every spring for one of our PBIS rewards. And where they're in a movie theater, they have popcorn and soda and they're watching the movie. And we still have kids that are up and down or wanting to go to the bathroom or this or that. They are Little Mermaid Jr. I'm, you could heard a pin drop the entire time. The kids were just sitting there on the floor, just glued to the stage. So it was a, it was a fantastic job. And I'd also want to give a shout out to one of our TK teachers, Brandy Latham. Um, she was named a semifinalist for Androscoggin County Teacher of the Year. Um, and she's just getting ready to submit um, to hopefully go on uh, to be a finalist for Androscoggin County Teacher of the Year. Yep. Questions, comments? Thank you. Thank you. TJ. My phone shut down. Here we go. Oh, there you are. So, uh, thank you guys. Good, good evening. And uh, we have. I, I want to also just make sure we can announce how well our kids did for the theater one act plays. Um, and I know they've already mentioned it, but the amount of work that goes into that and the amount of preparation. When I went to the first show down south, uh, it was for the regional finals, um, I was rolling in my seat. It was that funny and riveting. The kids were energetic. They were running back. It was, it was amazing. Um, and I hope that we can do it at uh, another time. I thought it was a really good one. So, um, Also, uh, I'll give you my enrollment is 400 right now. Um, the uh, other thing that I'd like to highlight that is uh, uh, just something that as administrators that we've been working on for the last four or five years and the committee that has created the evaluation process here at uh, the Spruce Mountain District is one of the best things that I've actually been a part of and how well and how well that community or that committee works together and how well the teachers take feedback and understanding of, of what is needed to be a teacher. I've had some of the best observations um, in my years here uh, for our teachers. The things they're doing uh, every day in the classroom just uh, gets me excited for our students and, and our staff. So um, I want to thank that committee. Uh, also, I gave you the um, events for the end of the school year. Um, it is busy right after vacation. Um, I hope, I hope you can come out 
to some of our things that we have. If, and we're going to send out invites to you to come to our honors banquets, to come to our celebrations, our senior celebrations, our scholarship celebrations. Um, last year, we gave, gave out nearly $250,000 to students. Um, this is one of the most giving uh, communities that I, I have ever seen. Um, and I've worked at multiple different schools in, in the state of Maine. And uh, uh, we are far above uh, the norm. So um, that's all I have today. Thank you. Phoebe? Um, so just to echo on what you said about um, it being a very giving com uh, community, um, I do want to um, just give a shout out to your office staff um, because I, I didn't want to steal your thunder in my board comment earlier, so I waited. But um, I do know that uh, you guys paired with other schools to help them with prom dresses as well. And it, that just, it warms my heart so much that um, they're all working together to make sure everyone is having a wonderful time. And the fact that that thought entered their mind of, we have this, let's share it, is just so wonderful. Yeah, and we thank you too. Anyone else? Holly? TJ. Hey. We've been back and forth this yeah. week um, on some percentages of graduation stats. Yeah. Um, I guess in on social media it was put out that it was our graduation statistics for 2021 were 63.4 percent um, which I guess that is the correct. That number. one is the correct yes. Okay. Um, some of the other numbers are right around the 75% mark. Um, do you know what the percentage is going to be for 2024? I, I don't have that number yet, but I can get that to you for uh, um, our next board meeting okay. and, and, ex and give everybody that. Yep. Okay. Yep. I just hope we're striding, striving to reach at least in the 90s. Yeah, oh, absolutely. You know, my goal is always to be in the 90s. Uh, we have gone through um, some time this past four or five years that um, students, uh, for whatever reason it is, have decided to go to adult ed or to um, move out of, the, out of the town. And when they go to another uh, town, they, they don't go back to school. Um, and, and pulling all those things in, uh, it, it is something that we need to address over the next couple of years. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, though. And thank you for working with me. Yeah. Anyone else? Thank you. Chris. Good evening. Um, I'm going to start with our school enrollment, uh, 323 students down two since our last uh, meeting. Um, I wanted to say that we're, we're proud of Huck, Andrew. He did a great job. He went really far into the, in, into the spelling bee. Um, our spring sports are going to be starting next week. On March 21st and 22nd, uh, the middle school play Little Mo Mermaid um, was presented. We did it to the elementary, the primary schools, and then we had a couple open nights. Uh, we had a great turnout. Uh, Dan figured about 150 to 200 people each night uh, for Thursday and Friday. Uh, the kids did really good. We got two awesome up-and-coming singers. I can tell you that. I can't wait to see them when they get up here in high school. Uh, yesterday, we had Senator Susan Collins come in for the Women in History Month. And she delivered a really great message to our student body about coming from a small town in Maine and being able to do anything, anything you want. Um, during that, we had the kids get to ask some questions um, at the end. And one of our kids asked her at the time, who is your favorite person to work with uh, th throughout all the years in Congress? And uh, her answer was wholehearted and true. And, and she said, Joe Lieberman. At the time that she was saying it, Joe Lieberman was actually passing away. Uh, so, which was kind of ironic when I got that later, that call later out, later that evening from her, uh, her, her uh, staff manager. Um, so, the last time I was here, I also I talked about the eighth graders trying to raise some money. 
uh, for the eighth grade trip. So right now they've been collecting items to auction and raffle off. So far they've come up with over $3,000 worth of items donated from local businesses around. Um, so on April 5th from four to seven, uh, come on out. There's some cool items. I mean, we got stuff from auto, free auto detailing to uh, essential oil kits and um, it's, it's gonna be pretty neat. So come bid on a lot of stuff and then we're gonna be raffling off a lot of stuff as well. And plus they'll have all kinds of food and drink and treats there. Um, we start off our, kicked off our spring fundraiser uh, last week. It's gonna go until April 5th. Um, if the students reach the goal, uh, they get to choose, well, they get to choose for a whole bunch of different options, but they brought it down to two. Uh, I know the outcome, but I'm not gonna tell them until the end. Um, it was either they have all their teachers kiss a pig, or they're gonna have a school-wide ice cream party, and then they're gonna decorate me like a Sunday. Um, so I guess my kids have been talking with uh, Michael's kids. So then I've got two really kind of exciting things to kind of end on. Um, so earlier this year, our alt ed program got to go to the main learning living school out in Temple for a day. Well, we've been working with them and um, they actually were with the main outdoor learning initiative and gave us a free grant, gave us a grant for the kids to go out there and spend one night in two days and they all that just finished reading the book hatchet so they're going to go over there and learn a bunch of those skills um and then and learn a bunch of those skills and they're also going to be learning things about uh composting and all, all kinds of fun gardening and farming type of things um i just hope they don't run into a bad temper moose in temple when they're out there um <clears throat> so about two months ago i started I get an email from Bryant Pond 4-H Camp and Learning Center, and they uh, asked if we were interested in going, bringing our students to their to their 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 to their camp. And uh, so I started talking to them, and they said that the trip's gonna is three days, uh, three nights, four days. And I was like, okay. So they said, I said, how much? And she, they, they said, well, it's fifty-two thousand five hundred dollars. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. It's, uh, it's way more than we can, we could ever afford. And I said, you know, thank you for the opportunity. They said, well, hold on. They said, we're, we'll give you forty thousand dollars grant. And I said, wow. I said, I really appreciate that, but still twelve thousand five hundred. I said, maybe if you give me you know, a year to, to uh, um, raise the money. Um, she said, no, this is a one-time shot, one-time shot, and it's going to be done by the end of this May. Um, she said, we'll give you another ten thousand. So. They're giving us 50,000 out of 52,500 to send our sixth grade students there for three nights, four days, less than an hour away from here. Um, and the kids, we've actually, some of that fundraising money, that's where that pays for the, uh, those kids to have this opportunity, pays for us to be able to go to Kiev, pays for all this other, other cool and exciting stuff. So um, they're going to be able to do, at the end of May, um, we're gonna go for, a, Three, they don't know yet. We're going to announce that to them here shortly. Um, but they're going to get to do stuff, anything from learning how to canoe, map and compass training, fire and shelter building. They offer hunter safety courses for the kids that want to do it, archery, zip lining, uh, low ropes, high ropes courses, team building activities. Um, then they're also going to be doing lessons on uh, the forest ecology and water ecology. So. Questions, comments? Tina, then Andrew. I, um, I went to uh, Bryant Pond when I was a kid. Um, and I loved it so much that I couldn't wait when I had kids to send them there. And the place is amazing. And the fact that um, you got this kind of a deal on it, I, I just, the experience that those kids will have in that place is so incredibly valuable. I sent my youngest boy there every year that he was able to go from the time he was old enough. And when he aged out, they brought him back as a counselor in training. And I gotta tell you, that's probably of all the things I miss about having kids that are school aged, being able to take them to that camp every summer is one of the biggies that I miss. 
I'm, I'm good on you for getting that. I'm super that excited happen. for him. Some of these kids will never have that opportunity again. I, I can't say enough good about that. It's That's huge. Not that I want this to be a Me Too mo movement, but <laughs> believe it or not, I went to the same camp too when I was in junior high. It was a prize for being in the science fair when we were in junior high, and it was an amazing, amazing yeah. experience. Uh, there is plenty to do. There is, You have fun. You don't even realize you're learning things, and I'm glad to see the program is still going on all these years later. There were dinosaurs when I was there. But <laughs> Uh, it's an amazing program. I'm glad you're going to get the kids into it. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Anyone else? Tasha? Yep. It is going to be open to all sixth graders. Yep. And it's not going to cost them any anything. So. Great. Anyone else? Thank you. I have nothing to report on, so we'll go to um, the adjustment. Um, Scott? I'm sure you've all heard about the eclipse. Um, really, this is about public safety concerns. Uh, a couple months ago, you know, obviously we knew about it. Uh, it wasn't a, a big deal, and then we started getting contacted by Franklin County Emergency Management. Uh, we've, we've talked to the J Chief just yesterday, um, there's a real concern because they're not exactly sure how many thousands of people who are going to be this way uh, coming through the Route 4 corridor. Um, so out of public safety and to make sure transportation wise we can get our kids home, uh, I'm recommending that we have a half a day school. Um, you'll probably be reading in the paper there are other local schools around us doing the exact same thing. Um, it's exciting and interesting at the same time, but uh, I'm sure if you work for public safety, um, it might not be all that exciting right at this point in time because they really don't know. Every time I, we talk to somebody, the number keeps getting higher and higher on how many people <coughs> might be coming through the area. So that's why that recommendation to have a half day so that kids can be home safe. And if you hadn't already heard, Rob Taylor has gotten uh, safety glasses, a special viewing glasses for all our students. They'll have them before they leave on that Monday. So, hey. Andrew just sent out a reminder. They're also available at the J Town office as well for glasses. Four bucks a piece. Yep. Do we have a motion? Tina seconds. Jody? Yeah. Uh, do you know if the after school program would run on that day for some parents that I know are Rob, not anticipating this in a week? I know Rob is, uh, some of the administrators were reaching out as well to, to the instructor who's been running the program because part of Rob's thing that he was going to do at French Falls was going to include the 21st century grant people. Did anybody hear back from her today? We can make sure they have the busing piece. But I, I haven't heard back from them yet. Okay. Robin. So if it's half a day and considering you're on that Route 4 corridor and you're heading out two hours from here? It's, it still gives, it gives us plenty of time. If in case the kids are on the bus a little bit longer, it gives them plenty of time to get out and be fine. No, nobody, nobody right around us is canceling for the day. Uh, Rangely might be because that's where everybody seems to be going. Um, and there's even been a rumor that they could be closing Route 4 from Strong up at a certain point in time on that day. Because they don't know where everybody's going to go. There's, no, there's not like this huge parking lot any place, and it's not like Rangeley Lake is a safe place to necessarily get on top of it. No, I mean, normally this time of year it might be safe to be out on the lake, but it probably isn't if, it ha if the ice hasn't already gone out up there. Don't know. 
So, Scott, when you say half day, what time actually? They would be dismissed at 11.30, like you. they normally are on a half a day. Okay, so I just clarify. Joel, and then Holly. Just wondering, is this just making this one day a half day and we're not trying to move a current half part day? Uh, I'm just wondering, I mean, we've gone through a lot of days already where yeah. it's either turned to half days of weather or all these other things that have happened this year. The so. reason I'm not requesting for it to be... Um, to move another half day around with it is because we're going to be letting staff leave a little bit earlier than they normally leave, so they wouldn't actually have the PD time that they would have on one of those other days. Um, I did do a little bit of calling this afternoon. Um, SAD 9 is going to have early release. Derigo is going to have early release. RSU 10 no change, no early release. Marana Cook, no early release. Gardner, no early release. Winthrop, no early release. Haldale, no early release. And RSU 12, no early release. SAD 52 is voting on it tonight as well. Anyone else? Seeing none, roll call please. Jody? Yes. No. Yes. So moved. We got your list of appointments, new hires. Um, don't forget, April 11th is the school budget referendum meeting, 6 p.m. here at the high school. Um, will not be a regular meeting that that time. It's just a uh, it's a referendum meeting. More papers. Uh, and then our next board meeting is April 25th here at the high school finance committee meeting at 5.30. Do we have a motion to adjourn? Tasha, do we have a second? Elaine, roll call please. Yes. 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 Yes.